I think, first of all, uh, there's a lot of censorship on the social media. And our articles can be deleted uh, very fast. But actually, the uh, internet police, they have their uh, schedule on duty. So they cannot delete every article. And they can only delete those articles after we already post it. Uh, sometimes it's a uh, few hours, or sometimes it's a uh, few days. So I think the, uh, the social media or the new media is a it's a new thing for the Chinese social movement. And um, even though we uh, face the severe censorship, it's, uh, we still have a lot of space and opportunities to spread what we're going to say. And uh, to spread our goals and trying to use the social media to mobilize the young people to engage in this moment. The second is about there's. Uh, because in China, in this very patriarchal society, we have a lot of uh, a very misogynist uh, sentence or word or discourse on the, on the new media, social media. So we have to deal with it. And we have to raise the public, public awareness, especially for the young people, about what is gender equality, why uh, gender traditional stereotypes is not right. And we can see there already a bunch of young women, they are very active on the social media. And they fight against those issues who have a strong connection about their own family, like marriage. Uh, if a m women enter into marriage, it will be, w it will be very uh, uh, unequal relationship uh, during the whole family. So we. Social media is a tool, and we, what we have to do is use it in a positive way and find the space. And I'm uh, not very uh, negative toward the, uh, the censorship, because even though uh, we have a lot of uh, censorship on the internet, we still can find the space. And now the, the, the biggest uh, uh, feminism social media got censored. Uh, one month ago, but now we still can be very decentralized. We have some new social media, and we do not need a big brand for feminism, but we still can uh, spread the feminism voices in China. In 2018, I think the Me Too campaign started from uh, individual case of Luo Qianqian. Uh, Luo Qianqian reported uh, her professor in Beihang University and then Beihang University take positive measures with the uh, dismissal of this professor. I think this is a good signal for the anti-sexual harassment campaign in China, even though uh, we don't talk a lot in the education system we, uh, about sexual Harassment. But I still think uh, now the young women, they are going to play a very important role voluntarily. I think uh, this is very important because in the past we uh, organized a lot of actions including Bloody Bride for anti-gender based violence and also occupying the men's room for call for the more rooms, more bathrooms for women. This sort of actions or uh, workshops, we all trying to find more uh, young women who are interested in this feminism moment. So three years I, I, after the unpredictable detention in 2015, uh, anti-sexual harassment wildly spreaded in China due to the detention, even though the mainstream media cannot report our, our detention, our story. But uh, in it, it's still uh, achieved a lot of efforts for, the, for, the, for this issue. So this is also an opportunity. Three years later, uh, with the global tendency of anti-sexual harassment campaign or Me Too campaign in China, we already uh, are all around the world. And uh, this tendency also spread uh, to China, Japan, 
and uh, uh, pa Pakistan. So the, I think the Me Too uh, campaign in China, it uh, have a strong connection with, with our street campaign in the past several years. Um, but uh, the, thing ch the thing is changed like uh, we cannot try to organize a huge movement now due to the new law, NGO law or charity law, national security law, uh, anti-spy law. This sort of laws have uh, greatly uh, restricted the activities of civil society, including the feminism activist. So we are trying to talk with the young women, uh, with, with talk with our generation about, okay, anti-sexual harassment, it's a severe issue in the university, in campus, and what you can do. And they are very creative, and they call for petition and are calling for the anti-sexual mechanism in, in different campus, in over 60 campus. So even though the government is trying to find an organizer, but there's no organizer for this Me Too campaign in China. And so when you, I think the problem is if our government trying to not to solve the severe sexual harassment problem in the campus, the issue will accumu accumulate, accumulate uh, step by step. So one day, these sort of things will become, uh, will explode all of a sudden. So just like, just like this year, we can witness a lot of students stand out, accusing their professor of the uh, immoral behaviors. Actually, it's, it's har uh, harassed a lot of students. So uh, it's hard to say uh, what this, whether this kind of decentralized will be very uh, successful, I think. We, we, we still need to wait and see, and we still need to try to mobilize the young people because we have the experience. Uh, and also these sort of uh, theor uh, practical theories, practical experience is very important for the young generation. And uh, I, th I still think myself as young generation. So, um, so uh, I, I I eagerly want to go back to China. I think it's a very important moment. I don't want to miss it. And uh, we still have a lot of space, uh, no, uh, not only on the cyberspace, also on the ground. We, we still can achieve a lot of progress about the feminism movement.